Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? And I am happy to let you know that today we are going to have an installation of a divine system. There is something that surprised me which I believe is so supernatural no matter the times I watch them live no matter the times I attend in person no matter the opportunities that I get to have access I am finding myself dreaming more and having encounters with them because I cannot get used to them I feel it within me that the Lord is here to transform us. I want to thank you, Baba, for transforming me and transforming the people that God gave to me. Thank you for coming to us and transforming us and changing this city of Kwekwe. Yes. in a short space of time the things that the lord has done for us from spirituality to wealth to wisdom is amazing we have a lot to show for this but i will only say three things you came to us last year and we were praying that we get land for our church in the city and when you left having blessed us, we managed to acquire land in the CBD of Kwekwe. And to me, I believe that is your gift to us. And I would want to thank you so much. As we are speaking... We thought that acquiring an expensive stand would stop us from developing the other church in Bizo. But as I am speaking, we are getting ready to put a roof on our building in Bizo, which you prayed for, a 2,400-seater auditorium, which is... It is, it is the first double story for a church in Bizo and possibly in Kwekwe. And this was made possible by your blessing and your prayer for we know your God is a God of increase. And I don't know why God is so mindful of us in Kwekwe of all the places in this world, everyone is crying to have an encounter with this great man of God, the only global prophet that we know. A father proper. Baba and Mama, I'm so grateful and thankful. Thank you for coming to us and thank you for blessing us and we can't wait for what you are going to give us from your God. We want to welcome first our mother. Mom, thank you for the person you are and for loving us this much and helping us through everything. We want to celebrate you, Mom, and we want to say welcome to Kwekwe. This is how we celebrate our... Yeah. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the general is here. 
all the ranks of heaven are in one place. They failed to define him until they said he is a gunship, a multifaceted man of God who is very comprehensive in teaching the word, demonstrating the power and the spirit of God, who is a father and a prophet. I am excited today, ladies and gentlemen, to welcome my father in the Lord to the city of Kwekwe as we are celebrating. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I would want us to give the best that we can in terms of putting our hands together and we open our mouth and we give God some praise. Let us praise him for what he is doing. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's try that one more time. Let's make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. We may be seated. We may be seated. Thank you so much. I would like to... Apostle, you must never think that you are the only one who has something to say. We, we all have something to say about each other. But before we get into the word, it is such an honor for me to to be here by reason of uh, a choice and a decision that apostle has made which is to invite us to come for such an amazing annual conference which is apostolic in its nature and we are here because of you, men of God. And we have come, and I would want to start by appreciating an amazing woman that takes care of you. Yes. Yes. You, you don't need to wonder about that. The evidence is clear. We can all see that you are in good hands and the girl, the girl knows what she's doing. And we really want to appreciate, we are not only appreciating you, um, simply because you have been so good to him, but I believe that also this ministry has found an outstanding mother in you. So we want to congratulate you, we want to celebrate you, and we want to salute you, the mother of this house, for keeping us together 
and the love that we feel is so overwhelming. Thank you so much for being the person that you are. Let's celebrate. Let's stand on our feet and we salute the woman of God who has done a wonderful job. Thank you so much. We honor you. We honor you very, very much. We honor you. While you are still standing, it is also good that you help me appreciate my friend, my love, Baby Rango Jesse. Jesse. Let's be seated. Let's be seated. Yes. I'm aware of the guests that are here. And I would like to also extend my respect and my honor to those that have been honored that are here, that are coming from different sectors and different, different uh, communities. I would like to also thank you for attending and I would like to thank you for being here at a time like this. And thank you so much. And everyone who has come, believe in God for something. Indeed, there is something from God in this place. Um, while I'm talking to you, I'm still going through the scriptures of the Bible, trying to find <laughs> what it is that I can share with you today. Because there are times when you prepare beforehand, and then when you get to the ground, a different need is communicated and you have to be sensitive to what the Spirit of God is saying. Of course, I have a lot of things that I'm going to say concerning the nature of the ministry that you have joined or the nature or the character of the anointing of the men that you follow. So there's a lot that I'm supposed to say, provided the temperatures allow me to do so. So I'll keep on teaching. I'll keep on uh, feeding you until until I see that you are, you are, you are sleeping, then I'll, I'll try to keep us together and bring your focus and your attention to sections of these many scriptures that I'm going to give you, I will select sections from those many scriptures that I feel are necessary, sections that are practical and applicable, sections that are relevant, sections that are within your context of life. But I'm, I want to say something concerning the work of God that is, in most cases, behind the scenes, what it takes for God to raise a person 
an individual and to give that person an assignment and a mandate. Because you need to understand why you belong to such a ministry as this. I'm amazed at the number of people that I've seen following men of God. And I've seen what follows the men of God not following the people that follow the, that man of God. The, there is need for the anointing that you follow to follow you. When you do it well and you do it properly, the anointing that you work for must work for you. The anointing, the grace that you serve must serve you. That is, if the service that you are offering to that anointing is the proper service. Once the service that you offer to the anointing become the right service, then the anointing that you are serving become obligated, it is mandated to serving you. But I would want us to look into certain scriptures in the word of God. First of all, we are going to look at the book of Judges, chapter number 2, and verse number 16. 17 and 18. I would have wanted us to focus just on verse number 16, but for context sake, let's have three verses from chapter number 2 of the book of Judges. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And yet, they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. Okay, read again verse number 18, yes. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. You may be seated. Verse number 16 comes after an entire Joshua generation had passed on. It is in that same chapter where you hear that then there arose another generation after the generation of Joshua there arose another generation which knew not the Lord. 
they had no idea of the workings of God, the operations of God. Yet this was a generation soon after the generation of signs and wonders and exploits. And just soon after such a generation of power, the following generation was the weakest in terms of their supernatural ability, even their comprehension of such an amazing God. They have no idea whatsoever. Yet still, that was a generation. Then, during that time, the Bible says that then they went on to serve the gods of the people around them. It was not just Joshua who had died. But Joshua's friends had also died. And the Bible says even the elders, all of the people of the time of Joshua had all passed on. Then here comes a generation which knew not the Lord. And then they went on to worship the gods of the rest of the people that were within their territory. There is something that I want people to understand there because we are looking at a generation here that has no idea, a generation that was not good at receiving or inheriting knowledge concerning their God, and their forefathers when all of them were gone. They had no God to know. And yet still there was a God in that land which was false. And that God, they went on to know him and to serve him. But once you have an entire generation dying over there, and you have a new generation, it means also over here there was an entirely old generation that had also passed on. But here also there was an entirely new generation that managed to inherit understanding of their false gods. I hope, I hope you are following. Because yes. how come there is no more God who is known in Israel? Yet Ashtoreth or Baal is still known by the people. And yet if you look at the edge, these two groups, they belong to the same generation. They are serving their gods under the same calendar. It means the sons and the daughters of the witches were more recipient were more receptive. It was easier for them to receive mantles from their forefathers who were warlocks and, and witch doctors. So there is an inheritance that must have happened to the sons of the inhabitants of the promised land. Okay? Because how is it that we have our children after we are gone, they know nothing about God. They have no God to serve. Yet they are supposed to go to their friends of the same age and they find them with a God to be saved. So that generation is so well educated in terms of dissemination of knowledge concerning their practices. This is why witches cannot end. You must understand that even if God is to kill all of your enemies today, tomorrow someone is coming after you. 
Because before your immediate enemy can breathe out his last breath, that hate, that jealousy must have been inherited, transferred to the next generation. How is it that my son who is Jewish, I have shown him the signs and the wonders that God can do. And just a day after my burial, he has no idea. And right next door, we have a generation that knows how to bewitch even a child of God. What are they teaching? What are they giving to their children that we are not giving to our own children? Is it the problem with the teacher or it is the problem with the students? Be seated, please. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Why is it that the generation with the right God, they have no knowledge? They knew not the Lord. So they had to go out there and outsource a God. Let's find another God. There is a reason why I'm bringing you to this. Because where we read verse number 16, you hear that nevertheless, now because of what they did, which was to serve foreign gods, when you are serving a foreign God, when you serve a false God, what really is false about the God that you are serving? Can a false God be non existent? And when you then serve a false God who is non existent, are you supposed then to have misfortunes happening because you have served a God who is non-existent? If he is non-existent, what is the source of the misfortunes? Because things started going sour for the people of God, yet God knew them, but they didn't know the God who was even aware of them. And the Bible says, because of what they did, which was to serve the gods of that land, the hand of God, the hand of God, it was not the hand of the false gods, it was the hand of their God that came against them. Whithersoever they went, God was against them. Whithersoever they went, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil. For evil. It was not even the false gods that they were serving that afflicted them. Because once you serve a false god, a false god who is, according to our understanding, is non-existent, He's, he's, there is no power. That's why he doesn't deserve your service. But how can such a God afflict? It was not the false gods that were afflicting the people of God, but it was the hand of God that came after them. But here, follow, follow this. And God handed them over to their spoilers. And Israel was spoiled. Israel got spoiled to the degree of her ignorance of God. And they suffered so much so that they, they become even bitter with the Lord. 
They didn't know what to do. They didn't even know how to cry. Nevertheless, here comes a time for deliverance. Nevertheless, God raised up judges to deliver them from the hands of their spoilers and oppressors. Follow this. So what I'm going to talk ab about here, I'm going to dwell much on the process, what goes into <laughs> the upbringing of a judge. You must understand that until a judge was raised by God, it was God, and only God can do that. It doesn't matter who you choose as people or the guy that you prefer unless God joins the queue and then he also chooses and he also votes for that individual. It takes God for a judge to be raised. It's all from what I know, it takes God God has the knowledge. He understands the ingredients that are required to be put together in order for you to come up with a judge. And God raised judges to deliver them. Get something before we go any further. Get something there. When God raised judges, the reason behind the bringing up of a judge, the reason was so that Israel would experience deliverance. So God in raising a judge, it was not really a judge that he intended to raise. It was deliverance. Deliverance. The time for the deliverance of God's people was ripe. And God is saying, I would want to deliver them from the spoiler. But deliverance is not a force. Deliverance, it is not electromagnetic. Deliverance is not in form of a cloud. Deliverance has to be personified. There is need for a judge to be raised in the name of deliverance. For your own information, if you are a Bible scholar, you must understand that even that judge that God is about to raise cannot come from the previous generation because the entire previous generation had passed on. God is now supposed to come and sculpt. He has to come and select from those most ignorant people that have no idea concerning the things of God and he isolates an individual that we grew up with. And God has to begin to give that individual experiences. So that what he gives to the judge, first and foremost, is an understanding of himself. Please be seated. Let me show you something here. Let me show you something. Because I know that most of you people, it, it might take you years to understand, even to discern the arrival of deliverance. Follow this. Follow this. Follow this. My God. Oh. <laughs> Can you see that what God is trying to raise here is not even a judge but deliverance? But the judge to deliver you from the spoiler, the judge, the judge, 
the power, the anointing, the oil upon his life, since he is a judge, that power must be judicial. The judge must have an understanding of the legal matters. Lest you are legally possessed with an evil spoiler. He knows how to administer deliverance from the judge's point of view. He must be a man who has an understanding of the laws of God so that when he appears, his appearance will translate to the appearance of deliverance. When you see him coming, what has come is your deliverance from every spoiler. So that's that's God's model. That's the shape that he decided to give to what we know to be deliverance. It was given a head, hands, and the deliverer had to come putting on a suit. We might call him joy. Be very careful. Because it was God who raised up the judge. It was God who raised him up to judge. So he knows exactly how to hit the hammer against the table when it is time for the final verdict to be given. So the man that God raises, we might see him as a man, but according to God, that's the formation of deliverance. Okay, put back verse number 18. Be seated. See, see verse number 18. See verse number 18. We read it together. I wanted to read it again. And when the Lord raised them up, judges, raised them, them up. It was because of them that God had to raise the judge. It was, it was not the judge, it was not the apostle that God had remembered. God had remembered the people and it was not the people that he remembered that he raised. Please follow, follow, follow. God comes to his people and he sees them being afflicted. And then he turns his back from the people. He goes on to come up with a plan. He says, I'm going to raise not the people, but a judge. But the judge that God went on to raise, it was for the people. God raised them. Next time you see a man of God rising, it is for them, it is for you. It is. The position of your man of God in the spirit is for your sake. I repeat, the position, the height, the altitude of your man of God. Next time you choose a man of God, be careful. In terms of altitudes. The higher your man of God is placed, the more visibility he has. You know, when God makes you a watcher, a watcher, there is need for a tower. 
to be dead, you must be given as an instrument for you to use as a watcher. You, you have to place a demand. If any king makes you a watcher over the city, the next thing that you need to ask for, it's not a, it's not a ballpoint. It's not a laptop. You have to place a demand. You say, I require a tower. I have to be the tallest of all the people. So give me an advantage so that I can look over your people. Are you following this? So this is coming from the raising of a judge. When God raises an apostle and you see him ascending, his ascension is for your sake. Uh, are you following this? Yes. Sit down, please. Sit down. Sit down. I want you to see something here. I would want you to see something here. So next time, because now I've, I've been told, next time I see from among us, we are the same generation. I thought we were all ignorant of this God. And then suddenly I see one of us rising up. Now I'm aware it is for my sake that apostle is rising. Before he delivers me, he must first of all be given a chance to escape our corporate captivity. Israel allow Moses to at least go out of Egypt. Let him first experience deliverance, which is personal. Let him have his car. Let him have his house. Deliverance at a personal basis. Moses came out single-handedly out of Egypt to have a feel of what it is, how it feels to be out of bondage. And God comes to him and he says, how do you feel? He says, it's okay, there's fresh air here. And God, God says, you have brothers and sisters in Kwekwe. So that when you preach deliverance, you are preaching from experience. You are, you are ministering from knowing. A generation that knew not God when God raises you out of that generation, the first thing that he equips you with is knowledge. He wants you to have a foretaste of deliverance. That's why some of you, most of you are thinking that when God is about to deliver a nation, when God is about to deliver a family, he will come after the entire family. Forget it, my brother. He comes after you. Just one. You. They are, they, are, they are so jealous of you now because they have no idea that you are being raised for their sake. Okay, put back verse number 18. See, let's see verse number 18. Let's and see. when the Lord raised them up, I'll, be, I'll begin. I know you, you want to go home, but I'll start preaching now very soon. Sit down, sit down, please. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. And when the Lord raised them up, judges, when the Lord raised them up, even them, they had no idea how to raise their own judge. All they know to do is suffer. It is only in the systems of the world where you have the afflicted <laughs> trying to raise their own judge. <laughs> people that are suffering are the same people that try to what? To raise a judge. <laughs> Verse number 18. And when the Lord raised them up judges, uh -huh. then the Lord was with them. the judge. The Lord was with them. 
the judge. The Lord was with them. The judge. On my way, the Lord was with them. The judge. <laughs> God raises up a judge. And also God is with the judge. And notice what happens as long as the judge is alive. Keep on reading. And delivered them out of the hand of their enemies yes. all the days of, of the, people. the judge. This is, this, is, this is something that I was, I was talking about on Sunday. That if people had known the meaning of the name given to Methuselah, if people had known the meaning of the name given to Methuselah, the meaning that after he is dead, then judgment is coming. If they are to hear that Methuselah is sick, all of them were supposed to come and try to, all of them and give him porridge. Every, every household was supposed to donate something, some bananas and apples from every, so that Methuselah doesn't what? Die. Because the day he dies, what comes after that? Judgment. So peace is according to his lifespan. Now, the, verse, number, verse number 18. And Verse number when, 18. And when the Lord raised them up, judges, uh -huh. then the Lord was with the judge. God was with the judge. Mm. Uh -huh. And delivered them out of the hand of their enemies. They are all, out of the hand of their enemy all the days of the judge. <laughs> so their deliverance and their freedom is from the day the judge is raised until the day the judge dies. As long as my judge can have a longer lifespan, as long as my man of God can survive what he's going through, as long as my apostle can even live longer than me, it's one thing that your enemy knows. So, if your enemy is to know that, that he cannot touch you until your judge dies, what happens to your judge? Your enemy comes after who? Your judge. This is why your man of God is being fought left, right, and center. Because it is known that it is during his time that you can experience liberty. Are you following this? Yes. Now, sit down. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. When, when, when God raises a man like the way that he raised the apostle, I have things that I would want some of you people to learn. Uh, please be seated. Apostle, you can sit down. Thank you. When, when God raises a man, when God raises a man, we see him rise. <laughs> he goes ahead of us. The presence of God that he brings here on Sunday, he must have had an experience. He must have familiarized himself with that presence on Friday. So that when the anointing and the power of God confuses all of us, he's in control. Everyone else in the aircraft is allowed to sleep. 
and to doze off until we land, not the pilot. One of us must remain stable despite what the devil has done to your city, what the devil has done to Kwekwe, what the devil has done to him. There must always be one of us who is more stable, who knows what he is doing when we go through storms. So God gives an apostle more stability by giving him prior, he gives him four tests. There is grace that you are yet to experience that he has already experienced. There is power that is yet to touch you that has already touched him. There is success that he has experienced and he has remained stable, 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 Stable. So he is, he is given that four test to go ahead of the people so that when he comes back with the same presence, it might blow all of you, your minds away, but he's in charge of that grace. He's in charge. He's in control of that power. But what really goes into raising up a judge? Are we patient enough to give God time to work on our men of God because his rising is for our sake. You will see one of these days how much you will suffer if you are to leave a man of God that God has raised and you look for the humble one. You will understand the advantages of towers. You will wish your man of God was higher than you when the enemy comes after you. This is the struggle that I see in most people's lives, they, all they, they are looking for, when they go from one church to another, they are looking for an average man of God. Men of their stature. A man who can see what they can see, who knows what they know. They are, they are, they are, they are not comfortable when the man of God seems to have a superior life than theirs, what you don't realize is that unless a judge is raised, he cannot administer deliverance to the people under him. There is a vantage point. Now, do you know, okay, sit down. Let me show you something. I remember one day, one day, I was reading my Bible. Uh, sit down, please. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I was reading my Bible and I came to a place and I saw, sit down please, thank you. Let's clap our hands for these people. Thank you. <laughs> one day, one day, you know, Moses said to Joshua, so this is the arrangement, tomorrow morning, you and the people, you get to the valley and you fight the enemy and then I will select two guys. Aaron and you, and will go to the mountain. And what I'm going to carry there is the rod of Jehovah. The rod of the Lord. The rod of God. So he went to the top of the mountain and then what he was doing there was simply to raise the rod. And after that, if you look at the name that he then gave to the place, it's a sermon for another time. Make sure you invite me again. Because, you see... Oh. <laughs> oh. All right. I know, I know you're still loving me. I will lose friends very soon. Be seated, please. please. <laughs> ah, you see... When I, when I looked at the strategy where you have your master 
you have your father, you have your man of God, you have the only support, your confidence that you're going to survive in this conflict is Moses. And he tells you, so what I'm going to do tomorrow, <laughs> you go down tomorrow morning, you, <laughs> Joshua and your people, you must go down and then I go up the mountain. So I will move away from the conflict for you to win. You, you don't read your Bible. That's your problem. That's... <laughs> ah. If you're not spiritual enough, you think this guy is abandoning you at the time that you need him the most. Because when I go through valleys, I thought that was the day that I was waiting to see the intervention of my men of God. And yet it is that day that you go down, that he goes up, he has to take on his position. Do you know, do you know what goes into raising a judge? Don't be offended when you see him sitting there and you are fighting with the Amalekites in the valley. It's important that he goes up the mountain. Sit down, sit down, sit down. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. What kind of a strategy? You would think this man is dodging what? Whoa. Where is my man of God when I'm in trouble? You have no understanding of the place that God has given to him the day that he raised him up for you. When you have that understanding, this understanding, you will not wish you will not demand, you will not ask for the man of God to come to the hospital when you are sick. You don't need him in the valley because you know what starts to happen. Like I said, your understanding of the word of God is limited, some of you. To think that Moses was on top of the mountain and the mountain was not even enough to lift him up. He had to raise up his hands. And by the time that Moses was getting tired, these guys had to find stones and make him sit. And, and they also came close to him and held his hands up. And it happened in your Bible, if you are to read your Bible, every time that Moses would get tired and his hands are going down, what were they experiencing in the valley? Defeat. few inches if the man of God is to lose few centimeters it will reflect in your warfare his descent his fall will reflect in your balance sheet it's showing at your workplace that my man of God has deteriorated What kind, of, what kind of a technology is that? Sit down, sit down, sit down. What is that? What is that? What is that? Imagine you are in the valley, you are Joshua, you are fighting, and you wish Moses would come. What is happening now? He's still on top. He's on top of the mountain. If he is to lower his hands, it becomes defeat over here. What if he is to climb down the mountain and he come to your level, he come to the hospital. I know some of you because you grew up, you have been spoiled. Unless a pastor visits you in the ICU, he's not properly anointed, he's, he doesn't care for me. And yet according to this understanding, you would want the men of God to stay away and get back 
to his position and lift up the rod of the Lord and that becomes my victory over a sickness and an affliction in the hospital. I don't need him to come. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. I'm saying this because, you see, you are, you are listening to a man who also has a man above him. I'm, I also have a father. I've buried people that, that were so close to me. And after a while, if my father is to come back and he sees me, maybe after four or five years, and he's asking, I then give him a list. Oh, okay, that one has passed on. That, how come you didn't tell me? For what reason? <clears throat> I also have a father, a spirit. I've never told him that my, my daughter is sick. I've never told him that my son is sick. I cannot lie to you. I'm preaching in English. And my father hears English. How come you don't tell me when you're going through challenges? Because I know if I'm to tell you, you will come down. You will start to sympathize with me, yet that's not your level. your position no matter what happens to me down here it is still victory I define it as victory I will not personally standing here today I will not expect my spiritual father to come for a funeral if I'm to lose any of my children I don't expect that from him that's not how we define our relationship. Stay on top of the mountain. And I do the fight in the valley. I understand spiritual things. So he should come all the way to bury my child. What's so special about burying a baby? Who cannot bury children here? Such a useless job. Why can I? Why? What? Burying. There are funeral palaces and they have, they have men of God that have no assemblies. All they do is to bury the dead. And I expect that from a man that God has raised above me to come and bury and I feel I have a man of God above me. That's my colleague. That's my friend. Are you following what I'm teaching you here? The valley is mine. The mountain is his. And at the end of the day, victory is mine. He raised the judges for them. Sit, sit down, please. Sit down, please. Sit down. 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 I'm, 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 I'm giving. I say. All right. <laughs> Child of God, if that is to happen, it would be up to him. I will not, and I will never ask for that. I will not celebrate the descend. Of my judge. I'm giving you secrets so that maybe, maybe this is why I'm where I am today. This is how we help each other. If you, are to, if you belong to this family, you need to know some of the rules of engagement in this family. <laughs> ah, you... <laughs> 
So you think apostle, apostle is at this level because he is spending 10 hours with me. He's always on the phone with me. That's why he's growing like this. That's what you think, right? And you expect that from him. The last time I was here and I preached my last sermon, until today I'm back, we spoke twice on the phone. Twice. Two calls. From the last day I was here until now. Two calls. Sit down, please. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Even when he came to preach at our ministry in Harare, he was told by someone to come and preach, not me. And he was sending me messages wanting to know what to cover in the, the anointing. I never replied. I never, until now, I, I never, never spoke to him. I knew he was coming. Happy that he was coming. But it was never me who spoke to him. So how is he growing? He is not demanding that I come out of my schedule. To accommodate him. But when I'm preaching, he's there. He hears me. He practices what I say. If my sermon cannot transform you, no phone call, no WhatsApp, no technology, no Instagram can ever help you. Understand the raising up of a judge. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Yet most of you, what you enjoy the most, when you see the judge coming down to your level. So what is my motivation here? I told him the best that I can ever receive from you is growth, maturity in the spirit, integrity. If you can maintain that for me, that becomes the best thing that you can ever do for me. So when he invited me, he was, af he was, he was even afraid to invite. I, I, could see, I could sense that this is an invitation. <laughs> I said, okay, say what you want to say. Yeah, you know, you know we have this conference. Usually we have it every year. You see, so, it, uh, so yeah, yeah, we, we are expecting, we are expecting to see things. Okay, 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 okay. What exactly do you want? Because it's not obvious that I will come. Are you following this? Yes. And I said, if I'm to come, I have a message. It's not for you, it's for your people. But I will only come on one condition. He knows it. I said, I'm not coming because he had said some other things that I didn't like. And I said, because of what you have said, I'm not coming. The only reason I can come, there is one condition. Then I'll come based on that condition. He, he will tell you one of these days. He will tell you so that you know why I'm here. Because I know his love. I know his commitment. <laughs> I hope you still remember the condition. You know it. T tell your people. Uh, my father said you should never give me money for this uh, conference. And the good thing, Baba, is uh, I've already told them about it. So it's not you starting to tell them about it. Thank I you. told 
Take them about the condition that, the condition. that, that don't prepare any seed, so that, any offering. So that someone here knows. Yeah. There could, there could be some other sons here. You need to understand the best offering that a son can ever give to his father. Character. If you can give me a better character. Character. I said to him, I'm going to demand that everyone who's going to be present should produce character. The fear of the Lord must be improved. Why, why am I saying all this? So that we have other people that are coming here for the first time. They think this is an enterprise, this is a strategy. That's the reason why. That's why you see you are doing your things, things are flourishing, not because you've got a special father. But you know, a special teacher requires a special student. It's not always the quality of the lecturer that determines the pass mark of the of the student. There is the quality of the student. See the great work that you are able to do in this such a small city. If another man of God comes to you and he sees all this, he's not ready to sit under you and learn from you. He wants you to hand you over to me. Looking at this, this is Kwekwe, my brothers and sisters. Open your eyes. Check your map. This is Kwekwe. Doing ministry like this and yet someone comes to you and he asks you for access to your father. He thinks there is access. He thinks you have access. And when he comes to me and I give him two calls per year, he thinks you are favored, right? Because you also give me money. <laughs> <laughs> what they don't understand is if you cannot collect if you cannot get what, it, what is needed from the teaching of the man that you follow from the teaching that when apostle comes here from beginning to end he has come to your house from here he speaks to you from here. Don't bring him down. When you go through difficulties now, when you go through challenges, and the enemy is coming again, it's no longer time for you to look and to, to invite Moses to come down. You have to start to survive on what he gave you. What did that, have you realized that with the way that Apostle teaches, with the way that he teaches, he has covered ground to a point where you can rarely encounter a situation that he has not addressed. He is designed, that's how God has raised him. So if he comes to Harare and then we are having a good time with the pastors, he also comes and he sits there among us, the pastors. And he's learning from there. Once I'm done, I'm gone. The same things that I'm telling every other pastor, he, he, he hears that. He, he puts that into practice. So what are we talking about? I'm talking about what goes into raising a judge. Raising a judge when God <laughs> when God finds you fit and success is your inheritance, you don't need seven hours with your men of God. When the father gave an instruction that he was in need of venison. 
the one who had was absent in that service. She was not a part of that congregation. She was outside of the tent. And she overheard the desires of the judge, of the men that God had raised in terms of blessings. And she went and she said to the most favorable son, son, I heard your father in a sermon. He highlighted his desires. And we know your brother is so close, but it, it, it takes time to implement. Sit down, please. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Very so, like, that's why I said, Apostle, um, I'm going to lose a lot of friends. You see, when you, when you, when you, Do you know in the Bible there is a place where John the Baptist called Jesus his friend? Think about it. He tells his disciples that Jesus is my friend. John. Can I tell you something? <laughs> John had some few challenges. Remember one day, people are coming to him and they say to John, do you know that that same Jesus that you, you introduced is now baptizing more people than you? What is this? What is it? <laughs> My father, this is so amazing. We, we were holding back as you were ministering, but uh, this is the second time where you are getting into a scripture that we explained yesterday yeah. of course in a different way and uh, you you didn't have access to what was happening here you are truly a prophet my father yeah. thank you yeah. also let me let me leave that one <laughs> i don't want to contradict what you said if I say something different, please follow him. Please. <laughs> I'm only here for one day. And they came unto John, yeah. John 3 verse 26. Yes. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, you, behold. You confirmed him. You bear witness for him. Behold. The same baptizeth, and all men come to him. Are going to him. Yes? John answered and know, said... I don't know why these, these disciples are saying all men, but they had left Jesus coming to tell John, yet all men are going to who? To Jesus. All men are following him. I wonder who you are. Okay? All men are following. And, and notice what John... John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye therefore bear me witness. Me or you now? Because we never, we never spoke about this scripture before. So I don't know where you're taking it from. Or maybe I'm prophetic, or maybe you're prophetic, or, or both of us, or even these people present are prophetic. But he said, John says, No man can receive anything except it be given him from heaven. Except it 
given him from heaven. I'll touch on that a little bit. Finish it first. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ. I'm not the Christ. But that I am sent before him. Uh -huh. He that hath the bride he is that the bridegroom. The bride is the bridegroom. Uh -huh. But the friend, the friend of the bridegroom. Of the bridegroom. Which when standeth he, and heareth him rejoice. When he stands next to the bridegroom and he hears him talk, the friend rejoices. Rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Yes. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. So is the friend. John. When Jesus is standing next to his people, thus the bride. He is the bridegroom. But when I stand next, when a friend comes and is standing next to the bridegroom, he is happy when he hears the bridegroom talk. That's why I'm telling you that my joy is also fulfilled. You see the problem? Remember you said you must decrease and he's supposed to increase. I'm standing next to Jesus as a friend. You come here looking for an apostle friend. <clears throat> this is why now, <laughs> when you are in jail, you want deliverance, you are questioning, is this the, is this the Christ? He can no longer, you are, at the, you are at the same level. You are at the same level. Never desire your man of God to be like you. But follow, follow what he said. Okay, let's go back to the first part. Where he said, no man can receive anything unless it comes from. John answered and said, a man him. can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. But what is, the, what is the something? If a man cannot receive anything, what is that something? What was the subject there? What was, what was it that was going to Jesus? People. People. All people were going to Jesus. Everyone was going to Jesus and John, his understanding, because at this point he has a proper understanding of where people come from. When people are coming to the apostle, they're not coming from their houses. John is saying, when you see them gather around a man of God, the people, the people that are coming to the man of God are not coming from their house. A man can receive nothing except, except it be given him from heaven. Where, where, where are members coming from? Heaven. When you have heavenly members, let me talk about that a little bit. When, when your members are heavenly, Apostle. <laughs> ah. Ah. Sit down, please. Sit down. I would want to... Would, hey, too many scriptures are coming here. Remember the day that... The day that Samuel raised Saul. And he had told the people that I'm coming to Mizpah and I will appoint a king. And then he comes to Mizpah. And then he starts to bring in one family after the other from the several tribes of Israel searching for Saul. And then the family of Benjamin was picked prophetically. And Kish family was picked. And then Saul was picked. And Saul was not even present. He did not attend that service. 
where the prophet was coming. He is about to benefit from a service which he was not even a part of. Be very careful. It also happened even when the same Samuel went to anoint David. He was not part of the audience. He was missing. Be careful of the people that will join you later in this ministry. Samuel, Samuel comes to anoint a man and he's not is nowhere to be found. And he was told that he was hiding amongst the staff. He was hiding. And people had to be sent and to, they had to bring him out of that hiding. And they brought him before the people and before the prophet. And the prophet said, behold your king. And when they saw him, the Bible says he was higher than the rest of them. You must understand what goes into raising up a, a judge. It's not just in the stature. As a man of God, a man of God must be a high place. Yeah. Are you following this? Yes. 1 Samuel 10 verse 23. And they ran and fetched him thence and when he stood among the people, when he stood among the people, he was higher ah, than he was higher than any of the people from his shoulders and upward. And upward, yes. And Samuel said to all the people, "See, ye him whom the Lord hath chosen." See. The man that God has chosen. That there is none like him no. among all the people. There is none like him among all the people. I'm about to show you something that is going to not blow your mind. <clears throat> Keep on reading. And all the people shouted and said, oh, All the people when they had a declaration by the prophet of a king, they all shouted in one accord. What was it? God save the king. God save the king. It was not <laughs> they that all of everyone there had problems. They did not pray for their problems. It was time for the king to leave. Because they understand that our deliverance is from the day the judge is raised until he dies. It's a principle as long as the king is alive, we are alive. Are you following this? Are you following this? Are you following this? With one accord, long live the king. Now I want you to follow something so critical here because Samuel is about to dismiss everyone. He's going to tell people, everyone to go home after this service. He's going to tell everyone to leave that place and go home. The prophet told everyone to go home. And he says to his house, everyone go to your house. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. So it was an order given by the prophet for every man to go back to his house. Look at what follows soon after an order was given for every man to go to his house. There were men whose hearts God had touched. They followed Saul. To his house. And Saul also went to Gibeah, and there went with him a band of men whose hearts God had touched. Sit down, please. Do you. <laughs> Is this a quick vision, Bible, or what? 
you, you people, are you, are you following this? The day the king was appointed and the prophet said, now the ceremony is over, everyone, go to your house. Everyone else went to their house except men whose hearts God had touched. They joined Saul as he went to Gibeon to his house. They forgot they abandoned their houses from the day God touched their hearts. They went after Saul. Defying even an instruction given by prophet Samuel to go home. Go to your houses. The only people that left that place and they went with Saul were people that God had what touched. So I'm supporting a scripture that says, no man can receive anything unless it is given him from heaven. You must know where membership comes from. The only people from this territory that can follow the apostle are people whose hearts God has touched. It takes the hand of God to touch a human heart and for the man to forget his house. He loses direction. You go after a king who has been, who has been recently appointed. Already these people were dead. They were willing to protect. They are, they are scratching their heads. So now that we have a king, we have raised a prayer to say, God save the king. But if you study these men became his army. These are his army generals. They were quick to, to fill in the gap. They realized that now Saul need a bodyguard. Now that the anointing is upon his life, we have done our prayer, but if we don't protect him, we might have prayed for him to live long. If we go to our houses, apostle is going to be afflicted. What do we do? We need systems and structures now to make sure that nothing touches the king. Who is going to come up with that strategy? Men whose hearts God has touched. The rest are intercessors. They pray for God to keep the apostle. <laughs> then they go home. And then God comes and he touches certain men. And they say, we cannot go home and allow the king he was Saul yesterday looking for donkeys. But things have changed. We went to the same school with the apostle. But the anointing upon his life has brought a difference. And they followed him. Look at the next verse. Sit down please. Sit down and listen. While you are sitting, please listen, listen, listen. Yes? Yes, but the children of Belial the children said. Children of Belial said, "How shall, how shall this, this man, man save, save us? us? How can this man save us?" So they despised him, and they and despised they him, him. No presence, and brought him no presence. And Saul held his, his peace. Saul held his peace. Can I help you a little bit on that one? Wallace, the man that God had touched, went with Saul. They were the sons of Belial that had the history of Saul. How can this man be king over us? Can this man save us? And they despised him and they demonstrated that they are not for him by not bringing him an offering.
And the people that did not bring him an offering were the sons of Belial, which is the sons of the devil. You can click the sons of Belial. Who is Belial? The devil. It's Lucifer. The sons of the devil said, we cannot have such a king, such an apostle over us. And to prove that, they did not bring him presents. <laughs> I will not dwell on that one for too long. I don't want trouble. I don't want trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so the rest of the people brought him something the day they knew the anointing was upon him they did not go to the king for money they did not go to the king for gold they carried their money to the king We cannot have a king that is broke. How do we deal with the mentality of having a, of a king who, who goes after donkeys? It was just the last week. And suddenly we have a king. How do we even stop our apostle from having his own personal businesses? How do we stop him? Let me... Can you go back to as men of God, we have to come up with strategies. We have to sit down and strategize and make sure that our pastors have some businesses that they are doing, which is good. Which is good. I know all those, all those scriptures. Paul was a tent maker, yes. It was because the people gave him a chance to make a tent. Now that we have a king and we don't want him to worry about the two donkeys, what do we do? <laughs> Let's raise an offering for him. Let's expose him to better experiences. Okay, maybe, maybe you, this one is too difficult. It's too, too, too deep into the Old Testament. Let's go closer to the New Testament. When Jesus was born, the king of the Jews, a star appeared. The star that appeared, none of the people in Jerusalem saw it at the time of its appearance. The star knew where sponsors were, financial partners were. So the star, before it was brought to Jerusalem, it was sent to the east by God. Because this is not the first time that God is alerting people that a child has been born. Remember, first of all, at, at first he had actually invited shepherds. Do you know with the shepherds, shepherds were looking after their sheep and an angel of the Lord appeared in the book of Luke, right? That angel that appeared... He, the angel sat down with the shepherds and narrated the nature of the baby. And after the announcement, the Bible says, and the host of heaven joined that one angel and they were singing, 
glory be unto God. The entire choir came and sang before the shepherds. And when the shepherds went and they found the baby, they were told you will find this. Is, this shall be a sign. You will find a baby in a manger. You will know he is the one. The shepherds left and they went and they saw Jesus and they explained everything that the angel had said. They left nothing. The ones that had angels sent to them. They went to Jesus. They saw the baby because they were shepherds. Partners in ministry. We are in the same league. It was not one angel in the host of heaven. They were not only told that Jesus was born, there was the entire choir. You, you can read it in the book of Luke. Verse two, uh, chapter 2, verse 13. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and mm. on earth peace goodwill toward men mm. and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven yes the shepherds said one to another let us now go even unto bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass which the lord has made known unto us yes and they came with the haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger mm -hmm. and when they had seen it they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. Yes. And all that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Even the mother then kept those words. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Soon after the shepherds left, they went and back to look after the sheep. And they the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all these things that they had heard and seen as it was God had <laughs> brought their occupation to an end the true shepherd is born your assignment is over instead of carrying their sheep to the shepherd they left their sheep they went to the shepherd, as shepherds, saw him, they went back to their old occupation. <clears throat> Follow this, please. Follow this. Follow this. Follow this. <clears throat> it's happening in the book of Luke, but in the book of Matthew chapter 2. Verse 11. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother. That's, that's chapter, chapter. Chapter 2, uh -huh. book of Matthew, verse 11. Verse 1. Verse 1. And now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem when Jesus of was Judea, born in, Bethlehem. Uh -huh. in the days of Herod the king, yes. behold, they came wise men from the east wise to Jerusalem. Wise men from the east, be seated please. Mm. That was the day that Jesus, you see, Notice, if you look at the days, I'm not here to do some calculations so that you, you know when. Because these ones, when they came, Jesus was no longer in the manger. It was the shepherds that found him in the manger. Because the angel had said, today, this day, a baby is born in this city. So they went there the day that he was born. When the wise men arrived, he was now in the house. <coughs> Please follow this. The star appeared in the east and the wise men, the star was able to draw not everybody, but men that were wise were drawn from the east by the star. These men are called the magis. The wise men are the magis. These are not just mere people. 
These are people that were well educated in terms of understanding the arrangement of the elements of the heavens. Like astrologers. The understanding of religious things and even spiritual things. This is why they were wise. These were scholars, yet they were so rich. These were bigger. These guys were greater than kings. The magis, if you study, magis were king makers. <clears throat> this is the reason why when Herod saw them, it shook him to the core. Because he understands the arrival of a magi. Why would you worry about a baby that is born king? Where is the worry coming from? If these were ordinary broke people, no. These guys had chariots of gold, frankincense, and man. All these incense, they are bringing it because, no, uh, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Because the king is born. The king. Oh, oh, oh. Remember when Saul was appointed king? <laughs> the sons of Belial did not bring him an offering. When Jesus the king was born, the star appeared in the east. These guys that you see coming, they are coming, they are following a star. Following a star. How did they know that this was his star. Because when they got to Herod's house, they said, we have seen his star in the east. Not a star. It is his. A personified, his, <laughs> the one that he owns. How do you look? How do you, how do you, come on. How, how can you look into the sky and you see a star and you know this one in particular is his star? Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east. Sit down. Most of you have been praying, you are believing God for what? Your own personal magis. The wise men that will come and finance your business. What you don't understand is that they must be wise enough to understand your star. It is your star that will lead them to you. If you if you think that all the entire astrology uh, uh, sector is demonic, <laughs> you have a lot of things to learn. You have a lot of things to learn. How come they knew that there is a star? Where are they coming from? Sit down. Where are these people coming from? From the east. What was in the east? Where are they coming from? Where are they coming from? I'm talking about the apostle here. Don't forget. Are we together? Yes. Do you still love me? Yes. <laughs> these people are coming from Babylon. They are coming from Babylon. Who is wise in Babylon? Do you know that when <laughs> the Jewish people were captured, including Daniel, <coughs> including Daniel, <coughs> by the time Israel was restored back to Jerusalem. Majority of the Jewish people remained in Babylon. And there were astrologers in Babylon and Daniel was made prefect. He was made the head of the wise men of Babylon. Okay? So having Daniel as your master as your coach, as your mentor, as an astrologer. Daniel, if you study his routine, in one place he tells you, I learned by books that the prophecy, the, the captivity of the children of Israel 
through the books of Jeremiah that we're not supposed to be here by now. So Daniel would go through books and study prophecies. So how did they know that there was going to be a star? Let me educate you. Do you remember? Some of you, there is this man in the Bible that you think, some of you were told that he was a witch doctor by the name Balaam. When Balaam tried to curse God's people and God stopped him three times, even seven times, several times, he came back the next time and he said, the Bible says, and when, when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, then he opened his mouth and he said, Balaam, the man whose eyes are open and I see the visions of the almighty God. And then he began to prophesy and he said, I see it, but not near. I see something, but not now. A star will arise in the house of Jacob. Are you following this? No, 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 no. From verse 1. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not as at other times, to seek for enchantments. But he set his face toward the wilderness, and Balaam lifted up his eyes and saw Israel abiding in his tents, according to their tribes. Yes. And the Spirit of God came upon him. Spirit of who? God. You have heard preachers say he's a witch doctor. A witch doctor... He saw the angel of God, even his donkey saw the angel of God. And God told him several times to not go and curse his people. He's a witch doctor. You have a lot of things to learn. This is the man that now the spirit of God came upon him. Uh -huh. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam the son of Beor hath said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said, he that said... <laughs> Amen whose eyes are open when your eyes are open uh -huh. he had said which heard the words of god the words of what of, of god the, of, of the devil of god yes which saw the vision of the almighty the vision of the almighty he saw the almighty in the vision lest you think the star that he saw was in reference to the star of david because he's about to prophesy a star that is going to rise from the house of Jacob. <laughs> Lest you think he's prophesying about David. He's telling you before he tells you the vision that what I saw in the vision is the almighty. What is he seeing? Falling into a trance but having his eyes open. I fell into a trance, yet my eyes were open. This is Balaam. Yes. How goodly are thy tents, O Jacob. He began to describe the tents of Jacob. Yes. And thy tabernacles, O Israel. Yes. As the valleys are they spread forth, mm. as gardens by the riverside, yes. as the trees of lye aloes which the Lord hath planted, and as cedar trees beside the waters. Yes, keep on going. He shall pour the water out of his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters, yes. and his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. Keep on going. God brought him forth out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. Yeah. He shall eat up the nations, his enemies, and shall break their bones and pierce them in through with his arrows. Yes. He couched, he lay down as a lion, and as a great lion who shall stir him up. Yes. Blessed is he that blesseth thee, and cursed is he that curseth thee. Yeah. And then Balaam is coming down. Balak is also coming to say, why have you done this? I've hired you to curse these people, and you've blessed them now these three times. Uh -huh. Then verse 14, after, his, after Balak got angry, 
And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he smote his hands together, and Balak said unto Balaam, I have called thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast altogether blessed them these three times. Mm -hmm. Therefore, now flee thou to thy place. I thought to promote thee unto great honor, but lo, the Lord hath kept thee back from honor. And Balaam said unto Balak, Spake I not also to thy messengers, which thou sendest unto me, saying, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, mm -hmm. I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord. I, not, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord. To do either good or bad, or yes. mine own mind, but what the Lord said, do what? <laughs> of mine own mind. Ah, if, he gives me, if you give me your house, your, the gold in your house. And Balak if Balak would give me his house mm -hmm. full of silver and gold, yes. I cannot go beyond, beyond the commandment, the of, commandment the Lord of the Lord to do either good, either good or bad, I can also do bad of mine own mind. <laughs> if I'm told to do bad by God, I, I, I can be dangerous. That's what he's saying. That's why sometimes his ministry is questionable. He can do some crazy bad things under the instructions of Jehovah. He doesn't care. He has no character to keep. Thank you, Father. But what the Lord saith, that will I speak. Yeah. Verse 17. Uh -huh. I shall see him, but That's not it. now. That's it. That's it. I shall behold I shall him. See him. But not now. Mm. Yet he is seeing him. This is the vision of the Almighty God. I shall see him. You people, he's telling even the people present, even the Moabites, there is coming a personality, but not now. I shall see him. I shall see him, but not now. Uh -huh. I shall behold him, uh -huh. but not nigh. Yes. They shall come a star out of Jacob. Ah. And the scepter shall rise out of Israel. Out of Israel. That's the same scepter, remember. The scepter which shall not depart from Judah, Judah. until Shiloh, Shiloh. Until Jesus comes. So the prophecy cannot end with David. This prophet is seeing as far as Jesus. Mm. So, they're, they're, so, so imagine, imagine you have a mentor by the name Daniel and he's showing you as an, as an astrologer signs that would appear in the sky if such a king is to be born. And he brings again the book of Isaiah chapter number 60. And he sees where it is written, Arise and shine for your light has come. And he goes on to say, Gentiles shall come to the brightness of your rising. Which is prophecy for Israel and prophecy for Jesus. And Isaiah goes on to even say in verse number 5 that even the Gentiles will bring their riches unto you. So Gentiles in Babylon... They can hear of prophecy by Isaiah that when such a king is to rise, there shall be a brightness. And they started storing riches just to fulfill Isaiah chapter 60. As Gentiles from Babylon, more than maybe, maybe 500 years later, Jesus is coming and yet people were still receiving knowledge from one generation to another. They were waiting for his star to appear. It was known that if Jesus the king is to be born, even nature is supposed to confirm that the king has arrived. You don't want to believe in Jesus, I'm showing you now. This is not what I came here to, to, to preach, but I'm just showing you that when the king was born, there were things that were set by God in the sky for the people that are wise to descend and to follow. 
So Jesus started receiving membership. Even at the age of two, before he was two years, he had financial partners. Sit down. Sit down. So that we don't have the king of the Jews who is broke. A judge has to be raised. He has to be above all of us financially. And you hear people as if, I don't know whether they read, whether they are English Bibles or Shona Bibles, I wonder. They don't, there was no need for Jesus to conduct a single fundraising. The money that was brought by the Magi's was enough. He left some of it. It's proven in the Bible. If I had time, I would have shown you the disciple who inherited the money that Jesus got when the day he was born, from the day he was born. You need to understand, because you cannot just look at a disciple when you are dying on the cross and you assign a disciple who is broke to look after your mother. You can't. You can't. Jesus was a wealthy man. So rich, he was made rich. There was no, he was not allowed by God to suffer even a single day. John 19, verse 26. Wow. Leave it. Leave it. Do you think Jesus was saying, pray for your mother? <laughs> okay, in your family right now, in your family, where you are born, maybe you are five, maybe you are ten, maybe you are six, you are seven. If your father is about to die now, and he calls all of you, Which one is going to receive an instruction from the father to say, look after your mother? The one broke? What you used to think, I don't want to put it into billions of dollars. This might surprise you. You are thinking of a little basket that they brought a little box with some few uh, grains of gold from Kwekwe. <laughs> These were chariots. Apart from the gold they brought, there was ma. Ma was for what? Go and study it when it was given to even Moses. It's part of the ingredients with which you make the anointing oil. They contributed to the anointing of Jesus. Supported his anointing by handing ma unto him in case you run out of oil. He had partners to finance his ministry and to even finance his spirituality though he had all the anointing. So now from that moment, realize what happens. Now that immediately when they handed over, you see, they are following a star. Following a star. You see, there was a, something different with that star. They had a way of knowing that this is Jesus' star. And they, they are following him, looking up. They are following his star. So his star is drawing people. So that you know that no man can receive anything. Anyone. Unless it comes from heaven. Whether it's money, it comes from heaven. Whether it is people, they are led by the heavens to the apostle. People are led by the heavens to come to the man of God. They followed Saul, those men whose hearts God had touched. It's heaven that gives you people. So they are following a star. When the star got to Herod's house, it disappeared. So that they would alert 
the outgoing king. And they went in and they said, it disappeared here. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? We have come to worship him. They were aware that he was recently born, yet they were ready to worship him because they were wise. Some people don't understand you when you come to apostle. Some of you are older than him and you call him father. People don't understand that. These ones, <laughs> they are coming to a newly born baby and they are declaring everywhere that we are going to worship him. Because he is born natural, a natural king of the Jews. And when Herod heard this, he was troubled in the entire Jerusalem. They were troubled. And he invited the priests and the, pro and, and, and the scribes to say, what is this thing that I hear about this baby? They went on to peruse, investigate, go through scriptures, and it was confirmed, O oh, king. This was spoken by the prophets. That indeed the king of the Jews is going to be born in Bethlehem of Judah. It is true. And then he went on to inquire from the wise men. When did the star appear? He and inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And after that... When they, and then he said, okay, I'm not aware of the, such a baby, but if you go and you find him, come back and let me know so that I can also go and what? And worship him. The moment they left this dark territory, the disappearance of a star was also prophetic even to the wise men to know that this guy will try to quench the star. This is where the light will be quenched. So the, the moment they walked out of his vicinity, the star then appeared. And they were so happy to see, not Jesus, the star. Because they knew this was his star. Mm. When they saw the star, Some they of rejoiced. Some you have been praying for years. You are not aware. If I'm to ask you right now, are you aware of your star in the heavens? You think it's sorcery. What makes a man to dream of you? to receive your phone number in a dream from an Arab nation and he calls you and he invites you to Dubai and he, wish, he partners, he starts a business with you. No investment from your side, only spirituality and your maturity and your relationship with God. What brings a man from the East? Do you know what it takes to raise a judge? Why is God not supporting your success? You are sitting here. You think everyone is broke. No one wants to help you. Do you know that there is a prostitute that is driving a car right now? Simply because she is a prostitute. And you have nothing attractive on you. You can't move the heavens and you tell me you were born a king, you are son of a king. Sit down. Let me, let me finish with you. Let me finish with you. Let me finish with you. Ah, sit down, please. Sit down. Sit down. Nature is supposed to respond to your birth. The brightness of your rising was what they saw. And Isaiah had prophesied that there shall be brightness when this sun rises. It's not just about Jerusalem and Israel getting riches from the Gentiles. No. Gentiles had to leave the east to approach the brightness of his rising with gold. Look at the picture now. Soon after they left their gold, their chariots and everything, they went back to their country. I know there's a lot of debate. Theologians, some they believe these were Jews. But I also believe these were Gentiles because they went back to their country. 
coming from Jerusalem. They went back to their country. They went back to the east. They are telling you that's our country. They came and supported Jesus, who was of the Jews, and worshipped a Jewish king, Gentiles, and they went back. He is your man of God here. He is your king here. Be, be careful of the star that appears elsewhere. And have you noticed that the day that they left, the day that they left, then here comes a dream, a vision to Joseph. And Joseph was told, take the baby, go to Egypt and hide him. Stay there until the people that are after the life of the baby are dead. At that young age, Jesus was crossing borders. It was easy for the parents to migrate with the baby because now they were financially stable. How come the vision came immediately after partnership service? And Jesus was brought to Egypt. That's the time Jesus was, was brought to Africa. And we kept him here. Jesus was safe in Africa. <laughs> we have not been good at keeping every other precious but God in Africa, ah, we are the best. If God wants to survive, he comes to Africa. Everything else we waste except God. Who prays like Africans? <laughs> oh my God. Ay, 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 ay. Sit down, please. So, what am I saying? Every time a king, a judge is raised, God will raise people that will come, that will finance him will support him, will bless him. By blessing him, they are getting blessed themselves. Huh? Everything else we can do. I came here, I told you to find a place, you found it, build the church, and you're already the process is going on. The church is going to be there. But imagine the church without such a man. And I, I have to tell you this, no matter what, whatever you do in the house of, there is no project greater than the visionary. No project. This one, I know this man sitting here, he will never tell you that. So I know what to preach when I, when I come here. I know what to preach. This is a sermon that you, you will never hear from him. Why? When they brought him no presence, so he held his peace. Yes. Put it there. Put it back. Put it back. Put it back. Put it back. <laughs> <laughs> First Samuel 10 verse 27 But the children of Belial said How shall this man save us And they despised him yes. And brought him no presents yeah, huh? But he held his peace you, you will not hear that in his sermon If 
This is the disadvantage that you have. This is one thing with the old men of God that most of you are in trouble. He is an expert in keeping quiet. This one. If it is anything to do with another project apart from himself, he's the one ahead of it. I know it. I know it. Ah. Aro. <laughs> I see someone trying to look for a switch somewhere to switch off the lights and the microphone. <laughs> My eyes are open. Can you still proceed? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, I'm so narrow. <laughs> hey. Hey. I can give you very simple things. There's no difference. You know there's no difference in giving a man of God gold and even giving him a gold mine, a claim. How much is a claim? Pegging claims where you know there is money. He doesn't work there. You work there. I'm not a guy. Sponsor and the response, the partner. <coughs> Is it difficult for you to see the brightness? Because if I look at him, how do I know the anointing upon his life is unique? It's easy for me to see. It's easy for me to see. I don't, you don't need to be too deep in the prophetic to see that this man carries an anointing. You look at the faces of his people. That's what Queen of Sheba saw. She saw the joy, the brightness on the faces of Solomon's servants. And he said, you guys, you are blessed to be standing before such a king. Anyone who can walk in here might not, you might not even notice that you, this is, it's like, I don't, even Arara is not better like, it's not, it's not as good as this. Who, who's, who said, who said Arara is the capital city? Who said that? Who said that? Even if I were to pastor you here in Kwekwe, myself, I would not polish you like that. I know the, the spiritual forces in this place. You are telling me that with your dressing you are coming from Kwekwe? With that your skin you are, you are from here? You cannot read the anointing, you cannot read the star because you are not a part of the wise men. If you, are, if you were wise enough, you would notice the difference in the sky. This is his star. This is his member. It's easy to identify a member of Apostle Joy. It's easy. You don't need a wrist bend for people to know that. No. You have a glory that you carry from, from him. Yeah. 
Sit down, please. Sit down, sit down, sit down. It takes a wise man <laughs> to notice that you are his star. And the brighter you shine, this is why we are supposed to keep on having more members coming to church following you, his star, to him. They look at you, they look at how you conduct business, they say, where do you go? They follow you. Isn't that what you guys do when you are korokosaring in Mangekinu? It's easy for, for people to know to korokosarabatamar. They cannot hide it. Kakombaka nenga wanegi zaba nenge pakatangi pakanuna nechi nechi. Anko pachika two days. It's easy because lifestyle in Umbaya change. I papo you can see from that day. So I don't tell you that you are Even if he goes there in the night, they know the way this guy is spending money these days, there must be a pocket somewhere. Yeah. So they follow, because they've noticed a change in lifestyle. So they follow him to the pocket. That's how people follow you to church. When they see a change of lifestyle. pocket yeah. postura. high grade. You're my apostle. Yes. Where do you find such a man of God? They are rare. Rare. Ngadai manzwa ne ugumwa. Nothing. But if anyone looks at you now, you will have to tell him that you are struggling. You will have to tell him that you have no money. But there is something from him, oil, grace from him, that has been kept keeping you intact and in place. What is that? What is that? When we preach like this in church, some people, they think, they say, ah, you know, that's the problem with uh, my church. No brain washkwa. Hmm? Ah, but these are the same people if they are given a responsibility to offer service to the president of any of the countries, even the president, whether of Somalia or of what, they are willing to die for him. Someone pulls out a gun, they run forward. Ready to die for a man who probably was never called by God, was elected by the people. But someone is ready to die for a man who is calling is never confirmed. There is no oil upon his life. How come a man that God has spoken to, how far should we go in protecting our own, in safeguarding our own, so that our own can live forever? Who is more brainwashed? A rock star musician. He has 74 bodyguards. A footballer, he has 64 bodyguards. Just to protect his skill, football. And when we have a man of God, we say, no, no, he's a man of God. God must protect him. Mm -hmm. His God must protect him. That's what the rest of the people said and they went to their houses. But those that God touched, they said, no. We know that God is going to keep our men of God by using us. It is by us that he is kept. Yeah. 
you interrogate every success. If you see the man of God rising, if you see his financial life changing without your involvement as an assembly, you worry about that. Where is this star coming from? Who blessed our man of God? Where did he get that car from? Who built that house for him? Lest we have a Gentile who is coming attracted by the brightness of the rising of our men of God. Who is that? I, I cannot stop my own parents from working. They like working. When I married my wife, I married a blessing for them. She is my wife. To them, it is their what? Their blessing. There is nothing that, sit down, let me show you. There is nothing that she, there is nothing that she has never done for them. My own parents. I, I don't even know what is happening there. I don't know when last I went to see them. Even my parents have a problem with me. Not only my spiritual sons, even my parents. It's her that they see. If she goes there, one of these days, if I'm there and they say, yeah, it has been a long time and I'm asking them, isn't she coming? <laughs> I married this one specifically knowing, knowing that I was never going to come. God himself knew that you, you had this caliber of a son. So everything is sorted there. Everything they want, they get it from her. She is the one, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even, I don't even know what is happening there. They get everything. If she feels that now, no, this guy has gone for too long. What's the mileage? Let me change it. I'm changing it for my mother. She goes ahead, she does it. But do you think my mother stopped working? She's still selling doy. <laughs> sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. She still goes to the village. <laughs> and she's bothering people in the village. They all, she summons. When you get there, you think there's a conference. People, women are bringing their peanuts too to her and she's buying and, the, and the, she's processing, she's cooking, she's doing all sorts of, but how much? How much? If it's time for holiday, it's her. She buys tickets and they are being flown, they are outside of, the, they are buying everything. Nothing is coming from Maria Doi. <laughs> she still wants to what? To work. But because she has a bigger blessing, the bigger blessing cannot even allow her to spend her own money. So you inquire, why is the life of the apostle changing without my involvement? You bless him to a point where even if, he's to, if he is to do a business, he has no chance to spend his own money. No. Let him work. But I go not to No. But quite a good. life you ma post to Rayaka Chinja, Yakawari in Yerezio, Yaka Vip. This is our man of God. This is our man of God. There is an investment here. 
the love the people that that the love the people have for their men of God in this place. These are not the sons of Belial. They love him. How do I know, Lord? <laughs> They've brought him presents. Gifts. You don't give to a man of God because he's struggling. No. If you find one who is struggling and you give him, you know what is happening there. You are blessing him. You are giving to the poor. <laughs> you go there to bless. You don't go there to be blessed. That's the principle. You sow up for your blessing. You sow downwards as you bless. You are also a blessing to other people that are below your standard. You sow up for your rising. You sow upwards to go upwards. Giving to the poor is when God has blessed you and you are now becoming a blessing to the poor. And there are a lot of pastors, a lot of men of God that are in that category. You bless, you are giving them, they are in the category of the poor. And we, we, we like that. And we like that. Because the way I in a matter now, the way that's why God said and the priest shall cause a blessing to rest upon your house. That priest is not found everywhere. Who can cause a blessing to rest? Not every priest can do that. Not every priest. Not every priest. Until we found a man that if we are to give, he proves to us <laughs> that you are not blessing me. He will prove to you. He has his own ways of doing it. <laughs> you will know. <laughs> you will know. Yes. You will know. You can gather money for one year, preparing a special seed for your man of God, and you bring it, and he pushes it away with his foot like this. Boom. Put it over. He starts, he starts to ask about other things. So let, tell me about this, tell me about this, and he doesn't even count the money. And you are looking at it, you are wondering, one year I've been... You, you want a thank you. <laughs> I'm telling you what has brought me to this place. I know when grace is coming from the top of the mountain. Yes. Are you following me? Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. Are you hearing me? It's not about money. Somebody might be wondering, but we can just be. No, 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 no. I just finished explaining Jesus to you here. This is Jesus. Can what our parents Jesus? Our parents go up and it is. Let's go together, and I want to hear. What about Jesus? The cross. The Bible says. Ah, 
Take it is explain. We want to know. We want to hear. How come what Jesus did on the cross doesn't seem to work for me here? Where am I getting it wrong? Explain my condition, please. Please. That is why we don't see changes in churches. Changes are happening everywhere else. Where things are being done properly, the name results. There is no, there is not much noise. There is not much noise. My doctor, man, is going to tell us what happened. But there was a noise in the church. If you follow them, who say Jaro, they don't have my microphones. They do. They have better results in silence. There's too much talk in church. Less practicals. Look at the way that he articulates the word. Know what you are looking for. Is it a ministry? Is it a church? Is it a circus? Are you looking for a clown? I'm not saying that I'm not saying that I'm not primary school, secondary school, kind of <laughs> college and university, hakuna kwa wakansu kwa mklasi mune noise ya gadaro. Hakuna. Tell me one classroom kwa wano shandisa mazi, kwa wano tulika malayi na rea mklasi. That's why church cannot produce the most age, the, the wisest of all the people. It's a place for what? For noise and not for knowledge. Where there is knowledge, that's why from grade one to grade seven, I got a block of a teds and so I divide one a zero. I could not grade two and tats, I would teach a tats, a tats, a tats, a tats, a grade three. My church is book I on Sunday go and book my same classes. You are my same classes, you are same number of shares. Wanavenyo wangu wari pokuva Monday kusuka Friday wangu wachidzidza zvakanaka pano yava bereki musi we Sunday same classroom same number of chairs now you cannot even you, can, you can't hear each other sit down please ndakupedza 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 all i'm saying please hear me hear me all I'm saying is, even if somebody is making that noise, is there substance? You have never had geography being taught that way. You're an accountant, right? <laughs> you have no, not even one lecture. Who approached you that way? Why? What is this? I'm not saying it's wrong. Sometimes we, we are used to that because we are religious people. Not spiritual, religious people. And we've said this over and over again. To us, it's, it sounds strange. When, when your own child comes to you and is asking for school fees, the way that you pray to your father. If your, if your son, your own child is to borrow your style, and he comes to you with a request,
<laughs> Is it wrong? No. Please maintain your prayer life, your prayer style. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying if it was yours, if your child is to come and is asking for a toy and he borrows your style of prayer, I guarantee you it's not a toy that you, that you buy for him. It's a prescription. You will call for a doctor. Someone told us that God is too far from us. It matters when you come. Even if you are going to pray so hard, so aggressive, after having received the knowledge, I like the apostles' style of teaching. I like it. I like it. I'm not, I'm, not say, I'm not calling myself very smart. I know I'm, I'm not that smart. Some, some, most of you, I know my background. Ah, teacher, <laughs> <laughs> so I cannot even listen I want somebody who takes me slowly and I'm following and I'm digesting and I'm pondering and you give me a chance to reason out and to accept yes I know but what I want to I want to assess my life versus what I'm hearing from the men of God. That's how he dishes out the word. That's it. Where do you get that kind of thing? I but he has a way of penetrating your mind, your soul, your spirit. And he convinces, he convicts you, he lets you know of where you are wrong, and you know if I'm to correct it here, things will go well for you. Why? Because he's an explainer. He explains it. You are crossing over to the other side. What, how are we going to cross over to the other side? You find all that in his teachings. That's why I like him. The way he teaches the word produces miracles. Yes. 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 How do I know? I see the brightness of his rising when I look at you. You are his star. This is your place. You make up your mind today. This is my church. This is my house. I belong here no matter what. Hakuna muna no fana uzumbu itaka monopoli kekutu uno fila kunge o wasiwa una access. Una access you una access kujeji. If I can only come and sit and I hear him talk, that becomes my miracle. Yeah. 
Make up your mind. I want to become an established member. I want to become a wise man to this man. I want to be able to read his star. When there is a movement in the sky, let me be the first one to know that there is a need and I carry substance. I will do a very short prayer for some of you. And God will give you chariots of gold. I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, that's, that, that's the reason why I'm here. I didn't come for anything else. I'm not desperate for anything. I'm not looking for anything. I love you so much and I know you love me. But I want you to be aware of this man. This man is your trap. This man is your temptation. Be careful how you treat this couple. Don't think I would say this if you were suffering. I wouldn't say this if you were suffering. I wouldn't encourage you to give him if this man was suffering. I know the danger of giving to a suffering man of God. How many, if God says to Abraham, I will bless those who bless you, how many can bless Abraham? Abraham is a temptation. When you see him, you would want to get money from him. Rarely do you think of blessing Abraham. Yet you bless Abraham, God says, I will bless you. This is your temptation. From what I know, there cannot be any man in this entire city living a better life than him. It's not allowed. It's not allowed. It's not allowed. If it was happening, I'm here to put that to an end. It's not allowed. This is our king. It must, your support to your apostle must get to a point where even if I'm to come as Samuel, and I try to remove you from your father, in Inuachu, it was Samuel who told people to go to their home. It was the prophet who told people to go to their houses. Even me, I cannot advise you to leave such a man of God. He is your man of God. He is your mentor. He is your coach. So I can come from Arare and I'm preaching here because he has given me access to his people. But what I'm saying does not have the final authority. It is his joy. His pleasure. It is his anointing that is going to work for you. Disobey me all you want. Obey him every single moment. Your life will go forward. I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this is going to work. Don't, don't even look at any contradictions. Even Samuel cannot advise you to leave Saul. If God has touched your heart, you become a permanent member to the men of God that not even, I'm not talking of other people in Ukwekwe. You meet somebody in, 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 in TM, in OK, and he tells you something about that. No, no, I'm saying even myself, Samuel, cannot separate you from your men of God if God has touched your heart. That's why I'm so careful. What I've come to do only is to support your love because I know it's there. To say, go ahead, go forward, keep on doing it. Very soon, results are going to be amazing. 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 Who said you go down? Who said you'll be broke if you keep on giving? To the right men of this nature? It cannot happen. It cannot happen in this family. Things like that cannot okay. 
We will see to it. We, 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 were, we were cooked so well by Jehovah. We know how these things are conducted. We know. There is, there is no witch, no wizard from where. This family tree is fortified. Uh, what are you talking about? So next time you hear us pray, we are jumping up and down. It's out of joy, excitement, celebrating what God has done for us. That we are allowed to do. But the devil can never make you cry again in your life. He cannot make you cry. When you go through the valley, you know there is a man up the mountain whose hands are raised towards me. Whenever you encounter success, prosperity, you are spiritual enough to know that when I was working, there was a hand that was raised for my success. My man of God has shares in what I do. I'm prosperous because of his spiritual investment. So to go for my door up in Yasha, a kuti, regamon, I didn't my funga kuti, eh, kuna, kuna, mari, eh, kuna, 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 Wawabata wese afura supermarket ino expanda. Wawabata wese aka waka imba wani zimwe zimba zino tevera. Ipa papa ndo opa chitubita cha ipa papa. There is not even a single woman, a single man who is under a case in this territory who will come to you and you touch him and you speak to him and he sits under you and he goes cursed. That will never happen in this house. It will never happen. It will never happen. The glory of your rising has come. Gentiles, people that you never knew they are investors. Magambo yona nzi dragons den. Dio, those that are here. My investor, I'm going to marry the papa. I'm going to talk about an idea. I name Soro. If you have an idea, the money is here. People with money are plenteous. The prayer today is for your star to appear. And for God to give the investor wisdom and direct helpers to you, they will follow your star. Strange people will come your way. I'm telling you this standing over here today. Some of you, you need to hear this loud and clear. Who told you that you need your own money to build your own house? You are uneducated in the things of the spirit. Even the richest people in the world, billionaires, who knows how to manage money, they will tell you, you don't, you don't start a business using your own money. Proper people who know how to use money. It's not your money that you use. You don't spend your own money. It is always someone else's money. And that door is opening before you today. No, ch no child of God is poor. No child of God is broke. No. 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 What I'm asking you to do now Someone is waiting for me to pray. I've been praying. I've been praying.
none of your children shall be homeless. None of your descendants shall ever beg for bread. <laughs> None of your children shall be desperate for help. Even you, as you go out and you come in, your gates shall be open from today. I speak to the heavens above you that even nature shall support your success. Even the clouds in the sky they shall move towards your direction. In the name that is above every other name. The name of Jesus. Now please, let's do something here. Let's do something here. Let's do something here. I would want, in as much as we have something else that is running in terms of the church, the building, the project, I would want to have the people that I know to be the apostles' partners, the people that are partners who saw directly into the life of the apostle, knowing for sure this one is not going to the church. And I, I, I will watch over him to make sure that what you give to him for that purpose doesn't go into the ministry. That's, that's my duty now. Because I know him. I know him. You need to sow directly into his life. And you become a lifetime partner. And you give God a reason. A reason to be around in the next 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years. Because you have a commitment. You know God has blessed you. You want to be a partner to the anointing of the apostle. Notice I'm not saying so much. It has to come out of your mind. If you want to ask God, go ahead and ask God. If you want to think, go ahead and think. This is what you're going to do. Am I promising you that God is going to do some amazing things? Even if he is not. Even if there is nothing. I'm still looking for people who are determined. Who are saying, even if nothing comes in the future, but what has happened to me already? I would want to partner with this anointing. So it's up to you to think of a figure that you know that you're going to be giving every month or weekly, even as God increases you. I want to see this. Hope my leaders, you also help me with my assemblies, the NUS, they follow suit. Yes, they follow suit. They have to commit. And you'll see, you will tell me stories from this exercise. From this exercise, you will tell me stories. You will be the ones preaching. I will come and I will sit and you will preach. Because I know this God and I know what he can do. Father, I pray. I speak grace upon every hand. That from today, the oil of success and victory over every transaction will be granted. You shall not experience any form of dryness from today. May you be allowed to access wealth, finances, for the purposes of supporting God's work. I speak the blessing of the almighty God. And I cause the blessing to rest upon your house. And upon everything that you do. You will not suffer. You will not lack. You will not want. You will not be financially desperate again. In the name of Jesus as you go. I pray that gates and doors will open for you. In the name that is above every other name, every curse is cursed. In Jesus' mighty name. As you go, flourish and become the best version of yourself. I pray that as you commit, God shall commit. I pray that as you serve this anointing of the apostle of God, this anointing of the apostle of God, 
will also save you. It will deliver you in the name of Jesus. Come and put your hands together for the Lord. You can do better than that. You can do much better than that.